Hey everyone. Well, Discord haters rejoice. Midjourney's website is now functional with a bit of a catch. So today we're gonna take our first look at the new website and see what we can and can't do on it. There are a few little weird command things that I think you should definitely know about, but there are also a ton of quality of life updates that I think you're gonna be really excited about. Okay, let's go imagine a website. So first off, in order to generate on the new Midjourney website, you will have to have generated 10,000 images. That said, depending on when you're watching this, that number may have tiered down. Uh, in order to check, just head over to the Discord and you'll want to prompt forward slash info which will give you your statistics. If you have generated over 10,000 images, the next thing you want to do is head over to alpha.midjourney.com. It is obviously exactly the same as the beta website, minus the fact that you can now actually prompt. So let's just fire one off real quick, prompting up photograph man in a blue business suit, an old chestnut of the channel, uh, and then firing it off. Uh, you'll notice that our create tab down here now has an image generating in it. So uh, if we pop over there, we have some shots of our man in the blue business suit. Uh, my favorite being number two, that dude is totally chill with taking the long lunch. Obviously all of these images default to nine by 16. So let's take a look at how we can start changing some perimeters around. Moving back up to our prompt bar and putting in man in a blue business suit and then adding in comma city street. Uh, if we head over to these sliders over here, you can see that we now have a pop-up with our aspect ratios, uh, our various aesthetic commands and our model commands as well. Our aspect ratio presets are square at 1, 1, a portrait at 3, 4, and a landscape at 4, 3, but we do have this slider that will take us to the most common aspect ratios as well. Stylization is our old command dash dash stylize. Um, so we'll take that to 600. Weirdness is of course our friend dash dash weird. And variety is what formerly was known as dash dash chaos. Under the model card, you will have options to generate in standard or raw mode. Uh, you have all of the various models going back down to version one and Niji version five and version four. And then obviously controls for our speed with relax fast or turbo. Uh, if you're on the plan that's higher than mine, you will have the stealth option here as well. Once you have your parameters dialed in, you just hit enter and off you go. Once our images have been generated, you can of course click on any one of them to lightbox them. Uh, and then all of our relevant information and additional options are down here. To note, there's actually a thumbnail strip over here in which you can sort of scroll up and down through your various generations as well. It's a really nice touch. So our options, once we have our light box, of course, are re-rolling it. Uh, we can very strong, subtle, or remix our image. We have our upscale options as well. And under the more button, we have, you know, panning up, down, left, right, and zooming at 1.5 and two. To note, under the very section, there is no very region yet. So you're not gonna be able to in-paint on the website at least not yet. Uh, we also have a button for use prompt, which will just basically take your prompt and re-input it into the prompt bar if you want to make any adjustments or changes. We also have use image, which instantly brings your image into the prompt as an image reference. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that you'll want to be a little bit careful with these buttons as they are actually fairly responsive. Uh, for example, if you just start hitting reroll right now, um, there's no indication that anything's happening but indeed it is re-rolling. In fact, if you scroll up on our thumbnail strip here, you can see we've now re-rolled twice. It's a little more evident when you have the thumbnail strip in view. Uh, for example, hitting that, you can now see that there's kind of a gap here and that it is now, you know, doing a very strong on our prompt. So just to note, if you've got an itchy finger, you wanna be careful, otherwise you'll end up like me with like, you know, 70 images of a man in a blue business suit. And check out this beefcake, buddy, you do need to go up a size. That is not workplace appropriate. Briefly circling back to in painting or very region. Uh, although it is not working now, I do see a path to a workaround. Taking another one of our old friends, the cyberpunk woman with white hair, um, you could actually hypothetically hit these three buttons and then uh, open it in Discord to in paint there. That said, uh, apparently that is not functioning on the website just quite yet. Hopefully that will be worked out soon, but again, a lot of latitude here. This is mid journey alpha after all, not beta and obviously not you know, full launch. So one of the other great things about the new site, both in the beta and the alpha version is the ability to explore on the explore page and learn from it. 
So taking this image, which I really like from Alex Shan, uh, thank you very much for being an example here, Alex. I do give you a little heart. Not only do we see his prompts there, but we can actually use the prompt and modify it as well. So taking the front end of Pagodas out and uh, popping in Big Bend London, I don't know, this is the first thing that came to mind. Uh, let's just generate that up and see what we get. And there you go. Some really nice photographic deep focus shots of Big Ben. I'm sure at some point there's going to be a debate whether this is cheating or not. Um, but to me, this is just a really good way of being able to explore different keywords. Speaking of which, Describe has gotten a pretty cool overhaul. Describe has actually always been one of my favorite of the mid journey commands. In order to use it, uh, just come up to our little plus button here. Uh, we'll have a prompt box to upload a file. Uh, so we're going to grab this image and drag it in. Uh, give it a second to upload and you know, off we go. So from here, we can either just use it as a straight image reference, but we can also come over here to this little info button. And if we hit that, it will populate with describe. Now, as I have mentioned in the past, as far as we know, describe is not actually connected to the mid journey language model. So just because there is a name or a descriptor, it does not necessarily mean it's going to one to one to the image that you have uploaded. So from here, you can actually just click on these tags and have them populate into uh, our prompt box. One of my favorite things about Describe has always been the fact that there are links to some of the tags. Um, for example, here we have some known artists. And if you click on that, you will be taken to a search where you can learn more about that artist's work. Uh, to be honest, I've become a fan of a number of artists just by using Describe. Also, I did want to note, since we're using an image reference here, if you did want to image weight, you can still do so. There's not an option uh, to do that in our sliders, but you can just manually go into the prompt and do a dash dash IW2, let's just say, uh, and run that and it will be image weighted. Most of the other commands do seem to work as well. Uh, for example, permutations, the most misunderstood and possibly feared command within Midjourney, running the prompt cinematic and then uh, curly bracket scary action and comedy uh, and then closed curly bracket, uh, we get the following three separate generations, cinematic scary, um, another generation that is cinematic action, and then finally a cinematic comedy. Um, this actually, this one is comedy gold in my opinion. Thank you, Midjourney, for that one. As a side note, in a previous iteration, Midjourney gave me our Joker mime here under cinematic funny. That's not funny, Midjourney. It is not funny. Overall, I am way more excited and happy with the Midjourney website than even I expected to be. Uh, for the record, I was never really that big a Discord hater, but after spending some time generating on the Midjourney website, yes, it is a much more pleasant way to work. There are bound to be more updates, stability, and quality of life features that will be added over time. But even just where we are right now, maybe minus in painting, I mean, the Midjourney Alpha website to me is a pretty big home run. I'm always keeping an eye on Midjourney, and with V6 right around the corner, I'm sure I will be imagining quite a bit. So if you haven't had a chance, I do invite you to hit the subscribe button as it does help out the channel quite a bit. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.